Hello, everyone, and happy September. I'm Yanis Makula, and I'm thrilled to be joining you for today's exclusive collaboration with My Favorite Things. The stamp set we have today is called Love, Joy, and Cookies, and here you can see this beautiful set on the screen. It features a fireplace, several critters holding shaped cookies, and several sentiments, perfect for some quick and easy holiday card making. So let's go ahead and start working on our card. Here I have a mini Misty stamping tool. I have a sheet of Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock and I'm going to stamp two images for my card. So I want to have a fireplace and then a critter sitting next to the fireplace eating that delicious Christmas cookie. I'm going to prep my stamps by simply rubbing my fingers across them. This is something I do all the time with new stamps. I prep them. This way it helps to get a much better transfer, ink transfer or impression. But I just never show this on video. So I figured I better start showing this so you guys have a better experience with your brand new stamps. I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink and stamping these images onto my paper. The ink I'm using is alcohol marker friendly and I will be using Copic markers to do some quick coloring. Now, before we jump to coloring, here is a look at the plan for my card, basically a sketch for my card. So I have a fireplace in the center, a critter sitting next to the fireplace, and then two sentiments. There is a sentiment at the top and then another sentiment at the bottom. Okay. Let's go ahead and get some coloring done. I'm using Copic markers today and I'm just doing basic coloring. I went to Pinterest and I searched for um, fireplace illustrations to give me some ideas on how this fireplace can be colored. And I went to the My Favorite Things Instagram page and I looked at examples of how their critters are colored to give me a better idea of how I can color my critter from my card. So here I'm using Copic markers and I started with reds to color the fire. I will also use yellow for the reds. I'm using R27 and then R24. For the yellows, I'm using Y19 and also Y15 color to add just a little bit of color variation. I'm not doing anything special or anything fancy. This is just some basic two-tone or two-shade coloring. Next, I'm going to color the space behind the fire and I want this space to be red. So here I'm coming in with my darker red Copics. This is R39 and I'm using this to saturate the entire area behind my fire. So I'm making this a deep saturated red color. Next, I'm using R89 to add darker red around the edges just to create some depth and perspective here. This particular red wasn't dark enough and I figured I needed to add more depth with a gray marker and you'll see me do that later in this video. Next, I'm using brown markers to color the firewood. I'm using E33 and E31 and I will use these exact colors to color the wooden parts of my fireplace. Here I'm starting with the E37, this is my darkest brown, then coming in with the E33, it's the exact same color that I just used, and then E31, again, the exact same color that I just used to color the bottom part of my fireplace brown. Next, using the same E37 to color the top shelf on the fireplace. And again, the same light and medium or medium and light browns to finish coloring the shelf. I want to have a classic looking fireplace, you know, with a red brick and the brown wooden shelves. I love that this fireplace is all decked for the holidays. We have a beautiful green swag and then we have this beautiful red bow in the center. Of course, it doesn't have to be red, but in my mind, it's the classic red. So again, I use the same red markers as I did before to color the bow. And now I'm coming in with a YG67. This is like my classic go-to green YG17. And I'll also use YG03 to color the greenery on on my fireplace. We have the nice red and green color combination, perfect for a traditional looking Christmas card. Next, it's time to color the space between the bricks. And for this, uh, for the plaster, I think it's called plaster, I'm using E51. It's a nice 
pale brown color or pale flesh color, I would say. And I'm just filling in the gaps between the bricks on this image. For the bricks, I will use the exact same brown markers as I used before. I don't really want to have red brick. I want to have more of a brown red brick color. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So again, using the same colors, I have E33 and E31. And I'm not blending here, really. I'm making sure that there are imperfections, you know, harsh lines between the two colors. I think that just makes the brick look a little bit better and I don't know, maybe realistic even. Now here I'm coming in with the C9 to add that depth and dimension and perspective to the inside of the fireplace. So it adds nice shadow here. And I'm also using a C7 to sort of blend that shadow a little bit further into the fireplace. Finally, coming in with a C5 and blending that even further inside and even rounding the corners a little bit. Moving on to the critter. For the critter, I'm first starting by coloring the cookie. And of course, I'm coloring the glazed part. Again, using red colors to color that Christmas stocking, with a, starting with the R27 and then using R24 to have a little bit of the color variation. Now, I don't show this on video, but I later come back to the little dots or the little circles on the stocking and I color those white using a jelly roll pen. Next I'm using E31 to color the cookie itself. I like this color and C1 to add a little bit of shading to the top part of the cookie. R20 is used to add a little bit of blush to my bunny and next I'm using W3 and W1 to add a little bit of shading to the bunny and make him look dimensional. I have already colored the holly and the berries that are added to his head and I use the same colors of Copic markers that I did before for the other for the rest of the coloring. So basically I'm just trying to make sure I'm not using too many different colors and I'm sticking to the same color combinations and the same markers. There are coordinating dies available for this stamp set if you want to pick them up. I do not have coordinating dies, so I'm doing some fussy cutting here. I do apologize, my camera goes in and out of focus as I'm fussy cutting, but I'm basically using scissors and I'm rotating the image in my hand. I'm keeping the scissors pretty still, but I'm rotating the image, making sure that I get into all the nooks and crannies while I'm cutting this out. These images are not too hard to cut out. And actually the reason why I picked a bunny for my card is because I felt like bunny was the easiest one to cut out using scissors. So using scissors to cut these out. And next I used a black marker from my stash and I just added black along the edge of my paper. This really helps to finish your fussy cut images and make them look pretty because you are coloring any of the white borders that you might have left on the paper after cutting. So just use a black pen, you know, a black marker, whatever you have and color those edges black if you do do fussy cutting like I just did here. Now for my card, I decided I wanted to do something very bold and vibrant. And here I have red cardstock. I cut a panel using the Spellbinders Matting Basics dies. I use the Matting Basics B here. So I have a red card base and then a panel that's going to go on top of that red card base for a tone on tone look. Then my fireplace and my bunny are going to go on top of that panel. Before I add my images onto the panel, I'm actually going to stamp the sentiments. I am using the fireplace and the bunny to figure out my placement. Here I also have my little sketch and I'm going to transfer these sentiment stamps onto the panel figure out the placement, you know, maybe play a little bit with the placement, move the fireplace a little bit up to the top, move the sentiments a little bit, just to make sure that things are centered. And then I'm going to stamp those images in clear embossing ink and heat set my sentiments using detail white embossing powder. I want to have white sentiments on my card. I didn't want to have anything black. So I'm using white embossing powder here. First, I treated my paper with an anti-static powder tool. Next, I inked up the stamps using clear embossing ink. 
And of course, I stamped them onto the paper and then added the detail white embossing powder from Simon Says Stamp and used my heat tool to melt the powder in place. I still love to do heat embossing. It's such an old technique, but you know, you can never get the same look with other products. So heat embossing, especially heat embossing in white, is still my favorite thing to do. With the heat embossing done, I used a cloth and I cleaned the leftover anti-static powder from my paper. I actually used a damp baby wipe and my paper kind of warped a little bit because I was using a damp baby wipe. Damp baby wipe is not the best tool to use for that, but that's what I had on my desk and I'm usually like that. I just reach for whatever I have. So next I used several sheets of scrap paper from my stash. I glued those sheets together and then I glued them to the back of my panel and used that to glue my panel onto the card base. What this did is it helped flatten my panel. It helped flatten the panel from the heat embossing and also from the warping that had that happened due to me using a damp baby wipe. So in the end, everything ended up being flat and I love this trick. I love using scrap paper to add dimension and help flatten my panels. Next, I used foam adhesive squares for the fireplace. I used thin foam adhesive squares and I used a double layer of foam adhesive squares for the bunny. You could see that I had a single layer on one end and a double layer on the other side of the bunny to make sure that I could adhere him onto my card. This card is not going to be complete without a couple of sequins. So I pulled out a Christmas sequin mix from Simon Says Stamp. I, I selected just the red sequins or confetti pieces and I added them here and there onto my card using the Simon Says Stamp embellishment wand and barely art glue. And I love the result. So here's a look at the card I have for you created with the Simon Says Stamp and My Favorite Things exclusive collaboration stamp set. Happy September. Thanks so much for joining us today. Love you guys. And I'll see you again next time.